All right. What's up? What's up? What's up, y'all? Y'all know what's your girl, Ash. I know, y'all. I am running so, 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 so late today, running my mouth, playing around on social media. But I've got to get back focused. So y'all already know it's your girl, Ash, again. Y'all know the creator of Black Girl Interrupted. So y'all already know before I get started, y'all know I have got to do my mental health check-in. Again, y'all do know it is Mental Health Awareness Month. So y'all drop in the comments. Y'all know how every show goes. I have to do my mental health check-in every time before I do my show, before we jump into tonight's topic. So tonight, drop in the comments. Let me know how y'all doing. How have y'all been feeling? Today is Tuesday. Oh, God, y'all. So let's see. How Where can I start? How can I tell y'all how I'm doing? So today was a little, a little rough for me. Um... Eight years ago today, I got my first degree. And so it popped up in my memories. And so, of course, y'all, my dad's picture popped up too because he came to my graduation. So I was like, Ooh. I was like, Daddy, I miss you so much. I wish you were here. But for the most part, y'all, I've been doing good. I've been hanging in. Um, you know, yesterday was a, was a little rough, but I made it through. I pushed through. Was a little hesitant about doing my shows. I'm just like, uh, but I got to keep pushing through, you know, because I do it for you guys. I do it for the love, the support that you guys consistently show me on a regular basis. So, you know, I got to jump in and I got to do this for y'all. You know, I love y'all so much. I do appreciate all the love and support that y'all continue to share. Um, And as you can see tonight, I'm rocking my Bayou gloss. So y'all already know Colors by Keish. Y'all already know who I get my lipstick from. Y'all can run over that. I think she's got some new colors um, that have launched or are launching soon. So uh, y'all already know I'm about to get back on my lipstick kick. So again, I'm still doing my mental health check-in before we even jump into tonight's conversation. So drop in the comments. Let me know how y'all feeling today. Uh, also drop in the comments. Let me know what other topics y'all would love for me to talk about. If you want to be a guest on the show. Like I say, don't forget to send me an email. Let me go ahead and drop it off in the comments right now. Um, send me an email um, and let me know uh, what kind, you know, what what topics y'all want to see, what y'all want to talk about. Again, I am finishing up the month of May, talking about everything in regards to mothers. So tonight's conversation, y'all. We're talking about pregnancy. Oh, so yeah. So pregnancy tonight is tonight, tonight's conversation. So excited. Pregnancy is such a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I think it's the greatest gift um, that you could ever receive from God, whether it's one, whether it's two, whether it's 10. Um, pregnancy is always a beautiful thing, but it also has its ups and downs to being pregnant. So y'all drop in the comments. Um, I want to know how y'all are doing before we even jump into tonight's conversation. Y'all let me know how y'all feeling tonight. What's going on? How's your week been? I know it's only Tuesday, but I didn't get to see you guys last week. So, you know, drop in the comments. Let me know how y'all are feeling. Um, just a few things, um, that I do kind of want to touch on a little bit. Um, again, as I stated, this is Mental Health Awareness Month. So if you or someone you know um, is having a mental health crisis, you know, whether you're suicidal, even if you feel like you can't talk to anybody, please call that number at 1-800-273-8255. Please, if it's not for you, reach out to someone else. Um, They also have, I also have another one. Um, you have your statewide crisis line. Um, you can actually call that number as well. That is local. You know, let us know. Let someone know how you're feeling. Let us know what you're going on. If you can't talk to anybody, please call that number. Um, also, again, anyone you know, the warning signs, please pay attention. You know, anyone that has that's threatens or comments about killing themselves. Um, if you see the impulsive or reckless behavior, 
talking, writing, or thinking about death, mood swings, definitely get the help for somebody. And again, let me post the suicide prevention phone number. It is up there on the screen. I will leave it up there for just a few more moments. Um, just in case you want to take the number down, in case you want to pass the number down to somebody that may, excuse me, need um the help. There's the phone number. And again, y'all, this is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I do want you to know we got to keep talking about it. It's always time to talk about it. Keep bringing it to the forefront. And to any of one of my friends that's going through anything, I do want you to know suicide is not an option. And you know my DMs are always open. If you ever need to talk, if you just need an ear, whatever you need, I'm always here. My DMs stay open. So y'all just don't know a phone call, a text, a message could change a person's day. So reach out to somebody. Check on your strong friends, as I see. Check on your strong friends. <sighs> and I'm a strong friend. And just to let you know, give y'all an update on my daughter before we, again, before we jump into tonight's conversation. My daughter is doing very well. She is with her therapist. Um, and so far, so good. So I'm very excited. Um, and again, I thank everybody for all the love and support that y'all showed me on my um, previous episode in regards to me talking about suicide. So without further ado, let's jump into tonight's conversation. So tonight we're talking about pregnancy. So thanks for my child. Drop in the comments. Let me know if you want to share your pregnancy stories. Pregnancy, like I stated. Beautiful thing, wonderful thing. The greatest gift God can ever give to a husband, a wife, a boyfriend, a girlfriend. Or even if you're a single mother, you know, be thankful. Love your child. Love, 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 love your child. Because like I say, pregnancy is so beautiful. Um, I am a mother of three and I've lost two babies. So, and my baby girl is my rainbow baby. So without further ado, y'all already know how I come. Y'all know I come with a lot of information. So let's jump into the first video and then we'll continue on with the conversation. All right, we've got a really important topic to talk about right now. We're going to turn to our series on Wellness Uncovered this morning, a look at the stark racial disparities in maternal health and infant health in the United States. Here's Janae Norman with what many are calling a public health crisis. Aisha Smith was thrilled to be pregnant, but the baby girl she named Savannah was stillborn at 38 weeks and five days. Leaving the hospital, empty-handed and driving home without my baby was perhaps the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. According to the CDC, about 25,000 women develop severe complications during pregnancy each year. About 700 women die giving birth and black women are two to three times more likely to die. The disparity in maternal mortality between black people and everyone else is one of the most clear signs that structural racism exists. On top of that, Dr. Neil Shaw says C-section rates have skyrocketed, but there are few, if any, benefits for term babies, and they present more risks for mothers. How do you think that the health system falls short during a woman's most critical and vulnerable time? Childbirth in particular, 80 to 90 percent of the root cause are failures of communication and teamwork. And what that looks like, particularly around racism, is that when black women express concerns about the way that they're feeling, particularly around pain, the whole health system is slower to respond. Dr. Shaw is dedicated to finding solutions and says something as simple as a whiteboard and a standard labor assessment that incorporates the patient's input and expertise, along with the physicians, could save lives. Aisha says she spoke up during her second pregnancy and was diagnosed and treated for gestational diabetes, delivering a healthy baby boy in 2019. Be your own advocate. Ask the questions. Team up with a doctor that you feel comfortable with because your life depends on it. Your child's life depends on it. For Good Morning America, Janae Norman, ABC News, New York. And our thanks to Janae for staying on this story that's oh, so important. Let's bring in Dr. Jennifer Ashton right now. Uh, this is right in your wheelhouse. You're an OBGYN. Jen, I was just looking at the numbers this morning. 
black women are two to six times more likely to die from pregnancy-related complications depending on where they live in this country. So the Department of Health and Human Services, they've got this new plan to try to bring these numbers down. How can they do it? Can they do it? Well, I, we, first of all, we have to try, right? This is a priority for our country in terms of health and our outcome measures. And if you look at their goals, I think they're very important and pointed, targeted objectives. Their goal is to reduce maternal mortality by 50%. That's a must. That has to happen. They also want to lower the C-section delivery rate by 25% because, again, that has real risks for the mother, both in the short term and the long term. And then pre-pregnancy and during pregnancy, they want to achieve blood pressure control in 80% of women of reproductive age. That is a direct response to the fact that cardiovascular deaths are number one in terms of driving our maternal mortality rate up. And another disturbing trend we're seeing in this pandemic is these numbers. It, it seems like they could be even be getting worse during the pandemic. So what's your advice, particularly for women of color right now on this? How should they be advocating for their health when they get in there to see a doctor? Well, first of all, when we hear the term advocate, I think a lot of people imply, think that that implies a, a fighting or combative relationship with your obstetrician or midwife. It's the exact opposite. It's a collaboration. That shared communication is key. Think nuclear submarine. You know how you hear the same thing being repeated again and again? That's where Dr. Shah's whiteboard concept is so important. And then, again, divide it up. Good pre-pregnancy health, good pregnancy communication and prenatal care, and then postpartum care for a year afterwards. Yes, so important. Okay, Dr. Ashton, we always appreciate your perspective. Thank you so much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the morning on GMA. All right. So huh, that was a little tough for me to watch. So the maternal death in black women is constantly increasing. Again, as I stated on a previous episode, we rank 43% higher than white women when it comes to maternal death. So jumping back into this, congratulations. You're pregnant. So let's talk about it. Drop in the comments. Let me know. How did you share your pregnancy news? You know, congratulations, you're pregnant. Hey, Brenda. Okay, I surely will. I'll give her a big hug and a kiss and I'll send her to you as well. How about that? How about I send that little child to you? Because that little girl is working my last nerve. So excited for her, though. She's going to the sixth grade. And she's going to be in the band. She chose the saxophone to play. So my baby will be playing the saxophone. Oh, all right. So congratulations. You're pregnant. So drop in the comments. Let me know. How did you feel when you found out you were pregnant? How did you feel? You know, like I said, tonight we are talking about pregnancy. We're going to even talk about the risk of pregnancy and how the things have heightened since COVID. Oh, so sad. So, 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 so sad. Yeah, don't laugh at me. Because <laughs> she is that little girl, that man. When I tell you, she is something else, cousin. Like, ever, like when I look at my babies, when I look back on my pregnancies, she was like the best pregnancy outside of my son. My son was a wonderful pregnancy. My daughter, my middle daughter, not so much. I was sick the whole nine months. Then she came early. She was a premature baby. She was, what, four pounds, 12 ounces when I had her. But by the time I brought her home, she was four pounds, seven ounces. Um, They wanted to keep her in the hospital, but I was like, no, nah, my baby is coming home with me. So that, she was my Christmas gift. Um, And then I got pregnant two additional times after my middle baby. I lost those two. And then I got pregnant with my last baby. And she was my rainbow baby. So congratulations. You're pregnant. Drop in the car. I want to know how did you feel when you found out you were pregnant? Like when I found out I was pregnant, so with my son, with him, I was at my little cousin's graduation. My little cousin was graduating from high school. And 
we went out to eat afterwards. And so I was so tired. And I was like, well, maybe because it's the heat. You know, I was here in Houston. It was so, so, so hot. So I didn't, you know, I didn't chalk it up to anything. I was like, nah, it ain't no baby. Um, pregnancy was like the furthest thing from my mind. So um, what did I do? So I want to say maybe like a month later, like my psych, my period didn't come. So I was like, oh, hell. So I called my boyfriend. I was like, oh, uh, you know, I haven't had a period. So I went to Walmart, bought the pregnancy test. So I'm sitting out in my mama's garage in the dark, y'all. <laughs> King Roni, good to see you, Coach Roni. Go check Coach Roni and her husband, Big Low, on Big Low Country Sports. You can find him on YouTube. He is live on Monday. He's live all the time. But go follow him, because Big Low, if you're football, baby Big Low comes, he brings it. He gives you the whole breakdown. He does. He gives you the, the footage, everything. I, I love him. Even though he's a Falcons fan, but go support my brother, Big Low Country Sports. Go run up his likes on uh YouTube. Go follow him. So... As I'm sitting, so I'm sitting in the garage and I'm like, okay, so I'm taking this pregnancy test. So I'm waiting on, just on the results. So I'm sitting in the dark. So my boyfriend comes over and I tell him, I was like, you look at it, you look at it. So it was like, you're pregnant. The two lines, I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm so excited. But I don't know, but I had a good pregnancy though. Like I had a lot of cravings. I ate everything that I could eat. Like I I wasn't really sick with him. I think with my son, I think I threw up maybe once or twice. But I think that was after I found out I was pregnant. No, I take that back. I used to eat the filet of fish at McDonald's, right? So when I got one one day and I threw it up, I was like, yeah, some made right. But I thought maybe because the fish was bad. But when I got another one, I was like, yeah. So that's when I found out I was pregnant. But you know, I wouldn't change it. I don't regret it. You know, pregnancy is such a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing. Um, you know, we as women, being able to feel your baby move, knowing that you're, you have another life growing inside of you, it's such a wonderful thing. And then when you hear the heartbeat for the first time, it blows you out the water. When you see your baby on the ultrasound for the first time, yeah, but it's nothing like actually giving birth and you're actually holding this this human that you carried in your body for nine months eight months six months you know how long your pregnancy was but it is absolutely a beautiful thing um i do want to shout out to all the mothers you know whether your baby is here or not you're still a mom in my eyes i love you ladies you ladies do a amazing job i know you don't hear it all the time but I think you guys rock. I think you are so amazing. Um, and there's nothing better than a beautiful black pregnant woman because I think we are gorgeous. Whether we're pregnant or not, I still think we're gorgeous. I think we're absolutely freaking beautiful. We're amazing. We are the queens of the earth. And we give birth to queens and kings. So shout out to my ladies. Oh, Yes. So drop in the comments. When do you share the news? When do you tell everybody that you're pregnant? When do you when when do you let everybody know it's official? I'm gonna be a mother. So reading the information online, it says you should wait till you're past your first trimester. Cause it's like your trimesters are like stoplights. You have your red, your yellow, your green. So it says the first trimester is considered the red light, you know, because you're still in the Anything could happen phase. So I want to know, when do you share the news? I think when I first found out I was pregnant, I told my mama right then. But my mom was like, I already knew you were pregnant. I was like, how the hell did you know that I was with a child? She said, I was just looking at you. You know, your face changed. Your body started to change. So y'all drop in the comments. Let me know. When did you share your news to let everybody know that you were pregnant? Were you in your first trimester? Did you wait until you were six months? Did you wait until you were four months? When? Like, I want to know, when do you share the news? Like I said, the moment I found out, I was telling everybody, I was like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. I'm about to have a baby. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Especially when I found out I was having a boy. Um, Because I prayed to God. I was like, God, whatever you do, 
just let my first child be a born. I don't care what, whatever. After that, just let my first child be a boy. And he did. He gave me a handsome baby boy um, that I had to deliver via C-section. My baby was six pounds, 15 ounces. He was, what, 21 and a half inches long and came out with a head full of hair. But let me share a little story with y'all. So my grandmother passed away in 1998. So... Of course, you know, when people, they say when older people die or are about to die, you know, they start to see people. So my grandmother kept saying, she was like, who is this little boy? Who is this little boy under my bed with all this hair that plays with me? So mind you, this was 1998. I wasn't pregnant. My sister wasn't pregnant. And my mom absolutely was not pregnant. So I was like, what? What little boy are you talking about? So I got pregnant in 2000, and of course, I gave birth to my son, January 21st, 2001. And the baby that my grandmother described was the baby I gave birth to. My son was born with a head full of hair. He looked like a big old, he, he looked like a teddy bear. He had these big old hands. And my mama was like, that's the baby mama daughter's son under the bed playing with her. So my son was, was we saw him, my grandmother saw him before he even got here, so get a little sad when I tell that story. I tear up because, you know, old folks have been knowing. But, yeah, so drop in the comments, y'all. Let me know. When do you share the news that you're pregnant? Like, when do you tell and who do you tell? Do you, like, have a sit-down? I've seen some videos that have gone viral where mothers, like, when they tell their family that they're pregnant, they send, like, baby clothes or baby shoes or they'll make an announcement. What are some creative ways to share the news to tell everybody that you're pregnant? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. I mean, I'm not pregnant or anything, but, you know, for the ones that are watching, they may be pregnant and they may want to know, like, when do you share the news? How do you tell your friends? How do you tell your family that you're pregnant? One question that I do have is, say, for example, you have a friend that just recently lost a baby. How do you tell your friend? you know, that you're having a baby? Drop in the comments. So Miss Roni says, wow, your grandmother knew your son was coming. She said, I've never been pregnant, but I enjoy watching the YouTube videos. When pregnant couples surprises the grandparents, their reactions are usually priceless. When I tell you, Roni, when I, I think back, like I say, my grandmother saw my baby before he even got here. And she just kept saying, this little boy, this little boy is under the bed playing with me with, with all this hair. I wish I would have posted, I, I wish I would have uploaded the picture so you could have saw my son. My son had a lot of hair. And even as he got older, I mean, it's like he had a little afro, but she did. She saw my son. And I think that's why, I don't know, he, he's, he's a different child. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know how to describe it. But, Roni, your day is coming. I promise you. Your day is coming. And when you find out you are pregnant, when I tell you, it, it's, it's the most amazing thing, especially when you hear your baby's heartbeat for the first time. Um, I cried. When I heard my son's heartbeat for the first time, I boo-hooed. When I saw him, when they did the first ultrasound, of course, he looked like a little chicken nugget in there. But I was just like, wow. I can't believe that I have another life born inside of me. You know, what? She said, girl, I don't want that day to come. Why? You know what? And, and pregnancy is a beautiful thing. I promise you it is. Like I say, it's, it's an experience that it is priceless. It, it's an indescribable feeling. Like I said, when I saw my son for the first time, when, when they did the first ultrasound, I boo-hoo because I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I have another person that's growing inside of me. And like I was saying before, he looked like, of course, they look like a little chicken nugget. And then, of course, you know, they start to form. Um, And then when he started to move, I was like, wow. 
you know, and he would respond. My mother, I used to, I would sleep in a bed with my mom because when I was pregnant with my son, I, I would just wanted to be up under my mom. So she would talk to him and he would move. He would get like right here and sit on my left side and she would talk to him and she would say, Corey, move, move, you know, granny baby, move. And he would move. It's like he knew her voice. So it's an, it's an amazing thing. Um, it's amazing what they do in utero. You hear them when they, you're feeling when they have the hiccups because your stomach bounces. Um, I used to like to see him move. I used to like to see my stomach go like this because he would, he would move, but it, it's beautiful. I promise you. And then, um, I had a wonderful pregnancy. Um, I ended up, I had to have an amniocentesis, um, with my son because I went 40 weeks. So they were like, we got to get him out of there. Um, <laughs> Roni says, I agree. It's a beautiful thing. She said, just not for me. I was just at the gyno today, making sure I don't have any beautiful mistakes. I understand. I understand. I absolutely understand. Get a dog, get some birds, some fish, you know, I mean, even though, I mean, they're still like babies. You still got to take them to the vet if they get sick, you know, just like you have to take babies. Um, to the doctor when they when they get sick, you know, take them to the pediatrician. But um, you know, so I ended up I, like I said, I had an amnio I had to have an amniocentesis with my son because I was at this point I was thirty nine weeks and my son still hadn't come. Um, so they were like, yeah, we have to induce your labor. Um, so went to the hospital. They had called me, and the night before, I just wanted to eat Mexican food, the night before, because they were going to induce him that Monday. So that Thursday night, I, I went to Taco Cabana. I had ate buku, Mexican food. Then I get a call that Friday morning. They're like, uh, Miss Pitts, uh, are you not coming to the hospital that day? And I was like, huh? I was like, we're not, I'm not due to come until Monday. And she said, no, the doctor... Change it. We're doing your induction today. We're inducing you today. I, what the hell? So I get up, take a shower, call my boyfriend. I'm like, babe, they they switched the day. Like they're inducing me today. He was like, but I thought it was Monday. I was like, apparently not. So uh, get up, get dressed, get to the hospital. I call my mama and I'm like, mom, I'm on my way to the hospital. They inducing me today. Everybody, like I say. We thought it was the induction was gonna go on that Monday, but that Friday. So, hey Brandon, you know I got something for you later, B. I got something for you later, B. <laughs> you know I got something later for you. So everybody's thinking, right, Roni? How do they change the day you have a baby without to right? So I'm like, what the hell? So Roni, so I get up, so y'all, so I get up, like I said, I go take my shower, I'm making my phone calls, I'm calling my mama, my sister was getting ready to go to work, she was like, what? But they were supposed to induce you Monday, I said, apparently it's going to be today, so get up, Roni says, hey Brandon, I've been good, babe, today, like I said, today started a little rough for me, um, Today made eight years since I got my first degree. And of course, it popped up in my Facebook memories. And it was a picture of my dad. And I was like, thank you, dad, for making my day special. So it was a lot of fun me, but I pushed through, pushed through, pushed through, pushed through. So get to the hospital. They set, you know, they put all the monitors, you know, they set the out, you know, put the IVs in, you know, everything set me up on the monitors. So to let you know, ladies, you cannot eat while you're in labor. You cannot. All they bring you is ice chips. That's all you get. That's all you get. You don't get anything else. Just ice. So my mama comes in there with McDonald's. I'm I'm like, what? How in the hell? Why are you doing this to me? I'm starving. Everything. Hey, Trigger. Good to see you, boo. Love you. So I'm in labor and my mama's eating McDonald's. Then my sister comes. She come with Chick-fil-A. I'm like, are you are you freaking kidding me? Like, y'all know I'm in labor. I can't eat anything. 
so um they let me labor. I didn't get my epidural till that Saturday. So y'all, I had to hurt all the way till Saturday because you can't get an epidural until you're like four or five centimeters. So I was like, okay, this, this is not going to work. So got my epidural. So I was finally able to rest. Um, okay. So I'm going to get to why. Okay. So Ronnie says, I've always wondered why you can't eat during labor. Don't you need the energy to push? So let me tell you why you're not supposed to eat when you're in labor. Number one, they don't want you to throw up. They don't want you to vomit. So when you're in labor, you, no food, no food, no soup, no bouillon, no nothing. All they bring is ice chips to keep you hydrated. So my mama thought she was slick. So my mama started giving me a little bouillon because I was like, mama, I'm, I'm over here starving. Y'all in here eating this food. So... They And then they don't want the anesthesia to make it nauseated. So, you know, no food. And, then, you know, because whenever they give you the epidural or whatever, um, they don't want you to be nauseated. So that's another reason why you're not supposed to eat when you're in labor. So get my epidural. I'm finally able to, to finally relax. Because when I tell you, I went in that Friday morning. I think I finally got there like 8, 30, 9 o'clock. And, uh. So I didn't get my epidural to that Saturday. So I hurt for 24 hours. And when I tell you, I would not wish that kind of pain on anybody. Don't let anybody tell you that those labor pains don't hurt because they hurt like hell. So if you are a woman that had that cramps when it's her time of the month, imagine that times a thousand or a million. Ooh, I wouldn't wish that pain on anybody. So fast forward. So get my epidural. So at this point, I'm like seven centimeters. They're like, yeah, she's making progress. We having a baby today. So I'm excited. So because everybody knows you have to be 10 centimeters before you can start pushing. So they had to, they had to break my water bag. My mucus plug had already come out. So we were like, yes, we in the right direction. Huh. <sighs> so eight and I get the eight centimeters. And they're like, oh, my God, her contractions are coming. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. So I start pushing. Only I didn't push out a baby. Rony, let's just say it wasn't a baby that I pushed out, okay? That's what happens when you eat. So she was like, oh, wait, that's the... Nope. So I pulled on myself, y'all. I pulled on myself when I was in late. <laughs> and all, so the nurse came in. She cleaned me up, flipped me over, got all the stuff out of the bed, and it was like, okay. So, um, finally got to eight, I'm at eight centimeters, um, and I stayed eight centimeters. Yes, Roni, I pulled on myself because the pressure, because they were like, oh my God, wait a minute. So, yeah, so that's why they don't want you to eat when you're in labor, because they don't want you throwing up, and they don't want you pulling on yourself. But I pulled on myself when I was in labor with my son. That's because I had eaten uh, Mexican food, and then my mom was giving me bouillon in the hospital. And no, she wasn't supposed to be giving it to me, but here it is what it is. Um, right. So no food. So that's why. That's like I say. Those are two of the main reasons why they don't want you to eat in labor. Like I say, because. All the medication that they give you, you know, when you're hooked up to your IV and, you know, um, if you end up having to have an epidural, because the epidural will kind of make you nauseated, at least it did me, um, and then all the anesthesia that they give you. So, I ended up pulling on myself. She was like, oh, no, that's not the baby. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, I'm so ashamed. I'm so embarrassed. The nurse told me, she said, oh, we see this all the time. She said, you're not the first woman that didn't pulled on herself and you won't be the last. So she cleaned me up. She cleaned my bed, cleaned me up, put me on a new gown, and, and we kept on. So I'm at eight centimeters. Um, so two hours pass. Doctor comes back. I'm still eight centimeters. Um, so he said, well, you know, let's, let's, you know, keep going. Let's see. Because your contractions are coming. They're coming back to back. Back to back at this point. Baby's going up and down. He he, 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 he playing in there. So I want to say about 
one o'clock that morning. Still at eight centimeters. The doctor was like, we got to make a decision. Your blood pressure is going up. The baby's heart rate is dropping. So all I remember is them saying, get a prep for OR right now, C-section. I'm scared as hell. I'm like, what? I had to have surgery. Like, y'all had to go in. So all I remember is them wheeling me into the OR. They, they came back. The doctor, came, the nurse came and told my boyfriend, they were like, she's got to have a C-section. You know, she's been in labor for almost 24, 48 hours. She's only at eight centimeters. She's not progressing. So what happened was my pelvis did not open up enough for the baby to come out. So we had to do a C-section. It was an emergency C-section. Um, so all I remember is them telling my boyfriend, don't touch anything in here that's white. So I was awake, but I wasn't awake. Like, I was so high because I was so full of medication when they did the C-section. Um, all I remember is hearing my baby cry. And I cried. I boo-hooed. So the reason I had to have a C-section is, like I say, my pelvis did not open up, and then my baby's umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck. So they had to go in, and they had to get him quick. Um, and I do remember when they brought him over to me, I was like, he stinks. But I'm high, I'm tired, you know, because I had, I had, they, I labored for almost two days. I went into the hospital that Friday and didn't have my baby till Sunday morning. So, whew, that was, that was a strenuous pregnancy. But like I say, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. I went on to have two more babies um, with my middle daughter. I was sick the whole nine months with her. And that's probably why she's a thorn in my side right now. Um, but I, I, I don't regret anything. I wouldn't change anything. Um, being a mom is such a beautiful thing. Being pregnant was such a beautiful thing. Although I hated being pregnant because I was pregnant in the summertime with all three of my children. All three of my kids are winter babies. So, uh, I was pregnant in the summertime. So, pregnancy symptoms. Oh my gosh. Y'all drop in the comments. Let me know what was some of your pregnancy symptoms. What were some of the cravings you had? Um, let me say this now. My now my son, and it's so crazy, y'all. So with my son, um, I wasn't nauseated. I was tired and I ate a lot. Um, but my pregnancy cravings were ridiculous. Like I had to have Olive Garden once a week. Chili cheese hot dogs. I was eating boxes of fruit loops. Like I would go to go through two, three boxes of fruit loops a week. Um, what else did I like? Like the symptoms with him. Um, what symptoms did I have with my son? Uh, the smell, like certain smells would, you know, would, would mess with me. Um now, I know when my middle child, I was sick the whole time. Everything about her made me sick. Everything I smelled made me sick. Everything I ate made me sick. Um, with her, my whole entire pregnancy, I think I gained maybe 20 pounds. Maybe 20 pounds. I think I was like, mm, I might have gained maybe 20, 25 pounds with her. But with her, uh, everything made me sick. Uh, certain foods, um, restaurants, certain cleaning products would make me sick. So your pregnancy symptoms would be like nausea, um, missed periods, but sometimes a missed cycle doesn't always warrant pregnancy, but that's one of the common symptoms of being pregnant. Um, what else? Um, spotting. Some people spot. In the first trimester of their pregnancy, um, your boobs swelling. Um, and don't forget, some men get pregnancy symptoms too. So women, we may not always get the pregnancy symptoms. Sometimes it's the man that gets it. You know, he may sleep all the time. I know my daughter's father, um, he, he would tell me he would vomit, he would throw up. So he had the nausea and I had the nausea. But I was like, oh, no. I don't know, but I mean, 
like I say, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. Even though, like I say, my daughter, who that girl there, that girl there was, 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 man, let me just say, with her, I love her, but she was, she was, I, I couldn't wait to have her. And I ended up having her early. She came early. Um, she wasn't due till January and I had her December 23rd. So she was my Christmas gift. She wasn't due till the end of January and she came like a whole month early. But if you look at her now, you wouldn't even be able to tell she was a premium. Like I say, she was four pounds, 12 ounces. Uh, she was a little something. Um, but it, I mean, just. All right, Ronnie, see you later. I'll, I'll see y'all. I'll see y'all on uh Big Low. I'll come check. I, you know I'm always gonna come over there, um to Big Low Country Sports. Give hugs and love to my brother too. So yeah, so the pregnancy symptoms, like I say, the nausea, the smells, a missed period, uh, the swollen breast. Those are some of the pregnant pregnancy symptoms that I went through. Um, like I say that that sense of smell. Oh. God, I freaking hated it, but I couldn't wait for her. So we're going into the next question, y'all. What are the pregnancy risks? Because y'all know everything comes with a risk, especially pregnancy. Um, I was not a high-risk pregnancy, but I know some of the risks that come with pregnancy are like gestational diabetes. Uh you have some women who may have had a miscarriage before. Uh, those are some of the risks that you run. Um, you run the risk of having another uh, miscarriage or maybe a tubal pregnancy or ectopic pregnancy. I'm sorry, not a tubal, but ectopic pregnancy, a.k.a. a tubal pregnancy. Um, but yeah, but y'all already know. I got a video, y'all, that the pregnancy complications. We're going to talk about it. What are the risks? For your medical health tonight, pregnant black women are the focus. Baltimore area doctors confirming they have more complications. Now, this is gaining more attention tonight after Beyonce released her Netflix documentary about her issues during pregnancy. WMAR 2 News' Erin McPherson breaks it down. They drive me every day. They are the reason I do what I do. Andrea Williams Muhammad a mother of four who helps moms just like her. If I say that I'm in pain, I'm in pain. She had complications during her first pregnancy. During his delivery, there were some things and some issues. Now she's part of the Baltimore Community Doula Program and the Black Mamas Matter Alliance. We, as black women, go against systems and realities of life just because how we present in this world is black. According to the CDC's latest research, African-American women are four times more likely to die during pregnancy than white women. These statistics from a 2011 to 2014 study. This has been a problem and an issue since day one, since we first appeared on this, this continent. While the numbers may be changing as studies continue, Dr. Rebecca Keller, a maternal fetal medicine specialist with MedStar confirms African-American women are at a higher risk for developing pregnancy complications. Some feel that it could be genetically related. There may just be more of a genetic predisposition. The most common, preeclampsia. High blood pressure that's diagnosed during the pregnancy, as well as underlying renal issues causing excretion of protein in the urine. This is the same problem Beyonce had during her pregnancy with her twins, something she talks about in her Netflix documentary. Dr. Keller says for the healthiest outcomes, screenings before and during pregnancy are crucial. While doctors focus on helping patients daily, Andrea is working toward finding a solution. Opening the doors for black researchers to focus on black maternal health and the issues that are contributing to it. In Baltimore, you're in Mac. Ooh, so we as black women, we do go through a lot. When it comes to pregnancy, you know, um, the pregnancy risk, um, you might have a blighted ovum um, or a tilted cervix is what they call. Hey, girl. Good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm, I'm running late, too. I was I was running all the way behind, playing around uh, on social media and then trying to get. 
I'm so sick of, I can't say this, this internet provider, but I'm so sick of them. And then the weather has a lot to do with, you know, with the internet and stuff like that. So y'all forgive me. So some of the pregnancy risks, you have preeclampsia. You have women that develop uh, gestational diabetes in their pregnancy. You have a lot of women that develop, excuse me, um, like she said, renal issues, renal kidney, um, heart issues. You have women that have had um, multiple miscarriages or they've had an atopic pregnancy. So those also increase the risk in regards to being pregnant. Drop in the comments and let me know um, what were some of the things that you experienced? What were some of the risks in regards to you and being pregnant? I know I was a high risk um, because I had had uh, two, two miscarriages. So I was considered a high risk when I got pregnant with my, ba with my baby girl um, because they were like, you know, hey, you've already lost two babies. Uh, so they, they monitor me. And then I did everything right. You know, like I said, I had one miscarriage and then the second baby was a, was a missed abortion is what they call it. And what a missed abortion is, is when the baby um, dies in utero, but does not come out. So I had to have a DNC. They had to go in and they had to, basically I had an abortion basically is what they did. They had to go in and they had to suck the baby out. Um, because if not, it would have set up uh, infection in the body um, had they not have taken the baby out. Um, but also, let me, y'all know I normally keep my information. So, more pregnancy risks. You have, uh, all right. Age plays a factor. Um, anemia. A lot of the, um, a breech position, breech position means when the baby is feet down. Um, and then high blood pressure are a lot of the pregnancy risks that you run, um, when you're pregnant, anemia, um, which means your urn is low. Um, like I say, you run the risk for preterm labor, which means you're going to labor early before it's time for the baby to come. So those are a lot of the pregnancy risks that we run. I mean, that you run into, excuse me. Being pregnant. Um, also, um, let me double back. Age. If you're over the age of 35, you become a high risk. If you're over the age of 40, you're considered high risk as well because you run the risk of um, giving birth to a baby with um, genetic disorder such as Down syndrome. So, um, and then if you're a diabetic, um, you run the risk of giving birth to uh, overweight babies, 9, 10, 11, 12 pound babies. I know my godson, when he was born, he was 11 pounds, 11.8 ounces at birth. So, and he's still a big boy. But he's so handsome, now he's a daddy of his own. So those are some of the um, risks that you uh, run into. And it also says um, high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, epilepsy, thyroid disease, Part of blood disorders, asthma, um, and infections can increase your pregnancy risk. So if you do have any of those diseases, please make sure um, that you're taking the proper precautions in regards to your baby. Make sure you are going to all your doctor's appointments on time. Uh, make sure you're eating well. You know, if you are a smoker or if you drink, please stop while you're pregnant because again you run the risk of having a baby born with fetal alcohol syndrome or you may not be able to deliver your baby at all because your baby may pass away because of the drugs the cigarettes the alcohol things of that nature so you want to be mindful you definitely want to take care of yourself and take care of your baby even though it's not here in utero you still want to do everything right in regards to your child, your child, your baby. Oh. So, again, drop in the comments and y'all let me know. Are there any other pregnancy risks that I may have overlooked? Or if you yourself have been pregnant and you are a high risk, drop in the comments. Let me know. Um, what is your story in regards to your pregnancy risk? Um, 
also want to kind of go back just a moment um, in regards to when do you share the news? So that go that really goes hand in hand with your pregnancy risk. Do you wait to share the news after your first trimester? Because like I say, the way it was described to me, like your pregnancy is like a stoplight. And I know I've said this once, but I'm going to say it again. It's like the first trimester is the red light. The second trimester is the yellow light. And the third trimester is the green light. But those risks can happen at any, I mean, the complications can come no matter in your pregnancy. It could come in your fourth, your uh, second trimester, which it could come in your third month, your fourth month, your fifth month. And then, or it could come in your third trimester, which is your six to nine months. Anything can happen around that time. I know um, they thought, I know with my baby girl, I know they thought I had, um, gestational diabetes so they tested me twice um because they couldn't figure out why my blood sugar was spiking the way it was but i thank god every day no i did not have gestational diabetes thank you jesus um so drop again drop in the comments and you let me know so again these two really go hand in hand when do you share the news as well as the risk do you want to wait until you're out of the woods to share your, your pregnancy news, you know, to let everybody know, hey, we're having a baby. Or do you want to wait until right when you find out, the moment you take your pregnancy test? Do you want to let everybody know then, hey, I just took, you know, me, uh, my mama knew all three times, all the times that I was pregnant, my mama already knew. So she was my pregnancy test. I just took the pregnancy test just for confirmation. <laughs> I did. I guess maybe because I wanted the confirmation for myself. Um, and then too, I was in denial. I was like, yeah, I'm not pregnant. There ain't no baby in here. But I was. I was. I was pregnant all five times. Three live babies. So again, drop in the comments. Y'all let me know what are the pregnancy risks. And again, if you yourself have experienced any pregnancy risks, share your story. Drop in the comments and say, hey, this is what I went through when I was pregnant. Oh, so here comes another question that I know has been up for debate for many, many, many years. A midwife versus a doula. Hmm. Let me say this. Had I had known then what I know now, hell, I probably would have had a doula. I probably would have had my, I would have had a water birth. I would have sat in one of the little baby pools and would have had my baby in the water. Had I had known then what I knew now, I think, um, had I had, you know, wanted to do a water birth, I think I probably would not have had to have a C-section. I think maybe my baby would have came on down, but I don't know. Who knows? But, um, let's talk about it. Midwife versus a doula. If, um, even if you don't have kids and, or if you're thinking about having children, what do you prefer? Do you prefer a midwife or a doula? Some people don't want the doctors and, you know, all of that. They want someone, excuse me, excuse me, that will sit at home with them and will coach them and, and you know, take them through the process of uh, delivering their baby. So let's talk about it. Midwife versus a doula. Does anybody know the difference between the two? Because uh, maybe they say midwives are the truth. So. Let me pull up the information. So it says doula versus midwife. Which one can deliver your baby? Hell, I'll deliver your baby for you. No, let me not say that because I may pass out. I may pass out. I had a homegirl. I was in there when she had her baby and almost died. I was like, woo. I was like, girl, it opened up that wide? You know. But let me say this before I even before I even go back into the midwife versus doula. Just because you have a C-section does not make you less of a mother. So let me address that right now because I've seen conversations on social media where people say when you have a C-section, you're not considered a real mother. You took the easy way out when it came to having your baby. So let me say this. As a mother that has had all three of her babies by C-sections, that did not make me less of a woman. 
I did not take the easy way out because you get you run the risk of complications whether you have a vaginal birth or a cesarean. I had a cesarean. I had to for health reasons. My son's umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck. And had I had been able to push my baby out, my baby probably would have died. So the doctor did what was best in the best interest of not only me, but my child. So to my ladies, I, I have, let me, let me take this off the screen because I want you women to know that it does not make you less of a woman or a mother because you delivered your baby via C-section. I had to, I did not have a choice. It was either I live and my baby die or I die and my baby lives. So my doctor did the best thing for me. And that was to deliver my babe, my son via cesarean. My cousin say that's right. My cousin say she had two C-sections. I had three. You know, unfortunately, my pelvic, my cervix did not open up enough for me to pass my children through. So I had to have a C-section. And I could have had a vaginal with my second baby. I could have had a V-back, which is a vaginal birth after cesarean. I could have had that with my second baby, but I said, you know what? Everything that I went through with my first baby, I didn't want to go through with my second baby. I didn't want to be in labor for 40 plus hours because I was in labor with my son. I was in labor for almost 48 hours. Almost about, I was in labor, what, 39 hours? My baby's heart, my heart, my baby's heart rate was dropping. My blood pressure was, was increasing. So they did what was best. They had to go in there to take my baby. So to my cesarean section queens, you're still a mom. You did not take the easy way out to hell with what other people say. It doesn't make you less of a woman if you had to have a C-section. As long as your baby got here healthy and you are healthy and safe, that's all that freaking matters. And you tell them, Ashley, a black girl interrupted, said that. You tell them I said that. Whew, I just had to address that really quickly. I'm so sorry, y'all. Y'all know when, y'all already know that when I do my shows, y'all know how passionate I am when it comes to certain topics, particular issues. Y'all know I'm very passionate in regards to that. So, going back, a midwife versus a doula. Do you know the difference? Would you like one? Do you, do you want a midwife versus a doula? So, doulas and midwives, they both do the same. They both assist with childbirth and they provide support to the pregnant mother. That's the woman that that's the that's the woman that's that's rubbing you and you know trying to relax you and things like that. Like your husband, your wife, depending on your sexual orientation. Uh it could be your best friend, whoever. But that's what doulas and midwives. So a doula, the difference between a midwife and a doula, so the a doula provides physical, emotional and informational support to an expected mother before, during, and after childbirth. A doula focuses on an expected mother's own needs, which enables her to have a memorable and empowering experience while giving birth. Because birth is beautiful, honey. When that baby come out, all the pain is so worth it. When you hear your baby cry for the first time, when they set your baby on your chest for the first time, everything, when you hear that cry, all of it's beautiful. No matter how many children you have. If you have 10 kids, it's all beautiful. Knowing that you gave birth to two or 10 or however many healthy, beautiful children, even if you gave birth to one. It's a beautiful experience. So the doulas... They specialize in the antepartum care and postpartum care. Um, a doula typically helps a woman prepare her birth plan. So that's what a doula is. Oh. And then the birth doula remind, um, stays with the mother during birth. 
They help with the relaxation. They help with the breathing. They give you comfort. You know, they like I said, they rub you. They massage you. They try to really calm your body so the birth process will be easy. So that's what a doula is. And y'all already know, man. Y'all know I, I bring videos. Y'all know I bring informational stuff in regards to any topic that we're talking about. So here's a short video on what is the difference between a midwife. Let me take this banner off. Between a midwife and a doula. Today on Mothers First, we're talking about the benefits of midwives and doulas. My name is Sierra McLean Henry. I am a Houston-based doula and childbirth educator. And I am Kendra Oates. I'm a certified nurse midwife and an advanced practice RN. If I were to describe the role of a doula, I would say a doula is a constant in a birthing mom's life. I empower moms with information through childbirth education that will enable them to be able to advocate for themselves in the birthing room. I'm there by mom's side um, while she's laboring. The differences between a doula and a doctor or a midwife is something that is often really, really muddled. An obstetric physician or a midwife or whoever you choose to have as your care provider during pregnancy, that's just what they do. They look after the health of the mother and the baby. They provide actual physical delivering of the baby during labor. That is not the role of a doula. A doula is there during all of those things, but oftentimes doulas get moms who aren't sure yet who they want as their care provider. And so we're even helping mom to narrow down that decision to decide what care provider and what birthing environment is even right for her. I am not there to sway her decisions. I'm there to provide evidence-based information. I'm there to provide education about, you know, what's happening in mom's body. But it's my job, if I accept this mom as my client, to support her in her decisions. What midwives do that are similar to physicians is we are in a way kind of low risk obstetrics and gynecologists. In layman's terms, we provide care for women holistically. The doula is essentially there for the patient as a support, and we're there to kind of guide it more so in a medical realm um, and to ensure that there's safety for the baby, that the baby's delivered properly. So our goal is to have them come in prior to pregnancy. Therefore, we can discuss how to make sure that you have the healthiest, most successful course of pregnancy. If a woman is looking for a midwife to deliver her, there's different ways that she can go about it. If she's looking for a home birth, that's one avenue. If she's looking for a birth center, there are midwives that work in that capacity. And then there's midwives that work in hospitals. So it really depends on what she's looking for. There is this belief in our culture that when you're pregnant, you need to go and sign up under the authority of someone. And that is not what um, that relationship should really look like with you and your doula, with you and your care provider, none of that. The mom is at the helm of, of this ship. It's mom's show and we're all there simply to support mom in the decisions that she is making. If you are speaking with someone who makes you feel intimidated or bullied or rushed or or they're laughing off your concerns, then you should consider that because the way that this person makes you feel matters. When you get into the vulnerability that exists in the labor room, that's only gonna be amplified. The benefit of having a midwife is that we are for women. We respect their choices, we respect their decisions, and we want them to achieve whatever goals there are. I feel like we educate our patients very well, and most of our patients are extremely smart, and they come you know, seeking knowledge and wanting to know how to have the best outcome for their delivery and their pregnancy. I feel as if we give them that ability. We educate them, we talk to them, we discuss issues that come up. There's never um, a dumb question or a stupid question. There's just questions that need to be answered. Birth has become such a quick drive-through culture type of experience where you have the baby and then you're just back at it. The state of maternity care sometimes only offers six weeks of recovery before someone has to get right back at it. Whether it's baby number one or baby number six, there's some level of change that they are experiencing and they're processing that change. They may not 
be able to speak on that. They may not even recognize it. But as humans, when change comes, we deal with it in a few different ways. Oftentimes, we internalize what's happening because our overarching belief, especially in this day and age, is that come what may, you just keep going. We need a buffer. We need some sort of cushioning. Often, I'm reminding them of that, that it's okay to slow down and to just deal with what this change feels like. Your family is expanding. Your hearts are expanding. Your legacy is expanding. And that's huge. In the end, know that you can do this, that you're empowered and you have somebody that's going to support you and fight for you and protect you. I think that's the biggest thing. I think a lot of women nowadays don't feel protected. That's our goal is to make sure that they feel protected and empowered, you know, throughout the pregnancy. I think that video was like so informative. So that lets you know the difference between a midwife and a doula. A doula is your support, you know, to help calm you, to relieve you, um, to make you, to empower you. The midwife, yes, they are certified to deliver your baby. Um, midwives really, you know, from, from what I know, and even from the video that I just showed, um, they want to make it the, the most pleasant experience possible, you know, without the medication. You know, they want you to do it naturally. So drop in the comments. Do you think a midwife or a doula is good for you? Would you like a doula? Would you like a midwife? Would you, you know, um, in regards to that, whatever works for you, whatever works for you. So I got to jump back to my cesarean section moms, my moms that had my mothers that have had C-sections. Um, Y'all know I got one more little video in regards to the process of a C-section. So again, I want mothers to know that just because you did not give birth to your baby vaginally, that doesn't mean you're less than a woman. It does not mean that you took the easy way out. Because like I said, I have seen this on social media where people have gone back and forth. Women, you know, have bashed other women because they've had cesarean sections. So give me one moment. Here we go. A cesarean section, often referred to as a C-section, is a surgical procedure in which incisions are made in a woman's abdomen and uterus to deliver a baby. Some cesarean sections are planned. More often, however, the need for the procedure becomes apparent after the onset of labor when abnormal conditions make a vaginal delivery unsafe for the mother or her baby. Common indications for cesarean section include dystocia, placenta previa, and fetal distress. Dystocia, or prolonged non-progressive labor, can occur when the baby's head is unable to fit through the birth canal or its body is in an unfavorable position, such as perpendicular to the birth canal or buttocks first, which is the breech position. Placenta previa occurs when a low-lying placenta partially or completely blocks the cervical opening. Fetal distress occurs whenever the health of the baby is in imminent danger, usually from inadequate blood flow through the placenta or umbilical cord. Fetal distress can occur when the placenta separates from the wall of the uterus prior to delivery or the umbilical cord becomes compressed or squeezed. Other conditions that may require a cesarean section include multiple births, large tumors of the uterus, genital herpes or other infections, or medical problems such as uncontrolled diabetes or hypertension. Your doctor may use ultrasound testing and a fetal heart monitor to help decide whether your baby should be delivered by cesarean. When a cesarean section becomes necessary, you will be prepped for surgery. If not already in place, an intravenous line will be started and a catheter will be inserted into your bladder to drain urine. In the operating room, you will be given anesthesia. In most cases, a spinal anesthetic is administered to numb the lower portion of your body. Sometimes, however, a general anesthetic will be used. Your doctor will begin by making an incision in your abdomen. It will either be a vertical incision from just below the navel to the top of the pubic bone, or more frequently, 
a horizontal incision across and just above the pubic bone. This is often called a bikini cut. Your doctor will then make a second incision on the lower part of the uterus. Once the uterus is opened, your doctor will rupture the amniotic sac if it is still intact and deliver the baby. The time from the initial abdominal incision to birth is typically five minutes. Your doctor will then clamp and cut the umbilical cord. Gently remove the placenta and tightly suture your uterus and abdomen. This typically takes about 45 minutes. The hospital stay after a cesarean section is usually three to five days. During this time, you will be encouraged to breastfeed, nap when the baby sleeps, and get out of bed often. While most patients are able to take care of their new baby soon after the procedure, full recovery may take six to eight weeks. Your scar will lighten as it heals. So, again, to the ones that want to debate, that's what we go through when you have a cesarean section. It's a surgery. You have complications with both, whether it's a vaginal or whether it's a cesarean. So, to my C-section moms, I love you. And don't forget, you're still a mom, and it doesn't make you less of a woman, regardless of what they say. So don't worry about them. So going into my last question for tonight, home birth versus hospital versus the home birth, what do you prefer? Let me say this. I, I'm an advocate for both, whether you have a home birth or whether you have a hospital birth. Again, if I would have known then what I knew now, I probably would have had a home birth. I would have went and bought me a little blow-up swimming pool, like what they buy, you know, like what the little baby's swimming, and I would have had my baby at home. But I'm glad with my first one, uh, I ended up having him at the hospital. I had to. You know, like I say, things are so different now um, in regards to, like, keeping a placenta, not cutting the umbilical cord until it stops pulsating. So many things have evolved in, in all this time. Like I said, my son is 20 now. So things are different. Um, I think if I were to have a baby now, knowing all the, everything that I know now, I would have a home birth. I would have my baby at home. But then again, I can't because I've had three C-sections, so I would have to have a four C-section if I decided um, I wanted to have another baby. So Drop in the comments, y'all. Y'all let me know. Do you prefer a midwife versus a doula? Or do you prefer a hospital birth versus home birth? With the hospital birth, you know, of course, you have all the doctors running in. And I don't think it's as intimate as it is with a home birth. I think with a home birth, it's a little more intimate. Um, you know, because you you get to set the mood. Um you have your candles, your music, you have your midwife and your doula. Some just do the doula, some just do the midwife, and they have their friends, you know, your significant other as um, your support system. But um, I think you get a little more, it's, it's a little more intimate with it, and I think you're a little more relaxed versus, you know, and again, this is just my opinion, so don't go by... What I say, this is just my opinion. With the hospitals, I feel like you don't get that level of intimacy. You don't get that level of support in the hospital because it's like, okay, come on. All right, we see the baby's head. Come on, push, push, push. And then they're ready to they're ready to throw you out the hospital in 48 hours. Hence, no complications. So that's just my personal opinion when it comes to hospital versus home birth. I think the home birth is a little more intimate. It's a little more personal. You're not rushed. Um, to have your baby versus being in the hospital. Like I say, in the hospital, um, I don't feel like you get the level of care and the level of love and support that you get versus being at home. So those are just my opinions. Drop in the comments and you let me know. Do you want a hospital birth? Do you want a home birth? Um, do you prefer a midwife? Do you prefer a doula? It's totally up to you. I support you either way. Um, 
but just do know that there are risks that do come with home births. You know, you may possibly, um, if you do, if complications do arise, um, you may end up having to go to the hospital and having to deliver your baby at the hospital. You may end up having a cesarean. It just all depends, but just do your research first, especially in regards when it comes to the midwives and doulas and in your research in regards of it coming to the hospital um, versus a home birth. So strictly up to you, honey, totally up to you. And I support you either way, moms, whichever way. So y'all already know I've come to the end of the show. Y'all know I roll into my final thoughts. Oh, let me put my feet down. Um, and as I bring the show to a close, I want everyone to know, don't forget, this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, and But before I jump into that, let me say this. Pregnancy is a beautiful thing. Pregnancy is not for everybody. Don't knock the next person if they say they never want to have children or they're not ready to have children because there's no time limit um, when it comes to people being mentally, emotionally, and mentally prepared to be parents. Because in parenting, it does take a lot. You, you do have to be mentally prepared. You have to be emotionally prepared. You have to be financially prepared. So it comes a lot. So to your people out there that judge, don't judge the next person if they say they're waiting to have children or they never want to have children. You know, respect their opinions. Um, don't go shoving your thoughts down their throats to push them into having a baby because some people, they don't want to hear all that. They've already made their mind up. They've already made their decision and said, hey, I don't want any babies. Respect that. Number two, a vaginal birth and a cesarean, you're still giving birth to a baby. Regardless of how your baby gets here. Regardless, like I said, if you have a cesarean or if you have a vaginal. Just as long as your baby gets here safe. That's all that matters. It doesn't make you less of a woman. It doesn't make you less of a mother. And no, again, you did not take the easy way out by having a cesarean. Because with a cesarean, you run a lot of risk. That's a major surgery. They're moving, they're moving your internal organs around to get to your baby. Anything can happen. I've read stories where women have had cesareans and doctors have left scalpels inside of them. They've left something inside the woman. So we run the risk too. Yes, you may have been fortunate enough to give, you know, to push your baby out vaginally. Mine came through my stomach, but my children still got here. And they're all three very healthy. So stop pointing fingers. Women, stop doing that. If you're not, if you're ready to have a baby, make sure your health is good. Make sure you're staying, um, you're going to your primary care physicians. Make sure you're doing your research on your doctors. Make sure you, whatever decision you make in regards to becoming pregnant, Make sure you do your research. Make sure you do your homework. Let me not say research. Make sure you're doing your homework. Make sure you know your doctor. Make sure you can be open and honest with your doctor when they ask you specific questions. Be honest with your doctor. Have you had a sexually transmitted disease that was untreated? Do you have AIDS or HIV? Do you have hepatitis? Answer these questions honestly so they know which way to go to help curtail some of the risk in regards of giving having a baby. Number three, shout out to all my beautiful and wonderful moms. I see you, sis, and I'm so proud of you. You're doing a phenomenal job, whether you're married, in a relationship, or single. And raising your baby, whatever you're doing, I salute you. My hat goes off to you. And you know, Ashley, a black girl interrupted, you know, I love you. Whew, so those are my final thoughts on that. In regards to moms. In regards to pregnancy. Again, this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Make sure y'all are checking on your strong friends. Make sure you're checking on your friends, period. You never know what they're going through. You never know how one phone call one message, a text message, anything. Pay attention to the signs. 
pay attention to what people post on social media. Reach out. It only takes 10 seconds to send a text message to somebody. That's all it takes. Let me post this up here. To anybody that's considering suicide, please take people seriously. Do not leave them alone. Remove all the lethal means, guns, pills, knives, whatever you got to do. Call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. The picture is up on the screen. If you can't talk to somebody, send a text. Send text talk to 741-741 to text with train with a trained crisis counselor from the crisis text line, and it is absolutely free. And they are available 24 hours, seven days a week. Escort them to the mental health service or to an emergency room. Please, 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 y'all know we have to keep talking about this. Mental health is at an all-time high and is getting sweeped under the rug. We have to keep the spotlight on this. I, I cannot stress it enough as a person that deals with depression and anxiety, as a mother that deals with a daughter that has her depressive moments, that deals with anxiety, that has become a cutter. I stress to everybody, check on your, your strong friends. Send a text. Go by their home. Whatever you have to do. Whew. It's at an all-time high in the black community, and COVID has not made it made it any better. Amongst the black men and the black women and the black girls and the black boys that we are constantly seeing being slaughtered in the middle of the streets. That's absolutely affecting what I meant to help. So I say that to see. Hug and love on everybody as much as you can. Be their support system. And when I say be their support system, be their support system. Don't offer any advice. Just be their ear. Let them vent. Let them get off their chest. Let them get whatever's on their mind. Let them get it out. Just listen. Try not to make the conversation about you. We all fall short in doing that. We always try to when, a, when our friends call and they have to vent, we all, we somehow are able to, you know, we curtail.
what's going on but it's raining the weather is bad so my internet has just completely gone down so on this note i love you guys i will portion so don't forget check in with your girl hold up i think it's coming back up we'll see all right so don't forget you can tune in with your girl every tuesday every thursday night 8 p.m central time 9 p.m eastern time excuse me uh you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter. I am available on all the streaming platforms. Also, check your girl out. I am on Spreaker. Don't forget, download, upload, leave a review. Let me know how you felt about tonight's episode. Drop a comment. Let me know. But I love you guys. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you guys Thursday night. Again, Thursday night, we will be talking about abortion. So. Hugs and love. See you Thursday.